Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Basketball Conference, the ACC Football Podcast Live National Championship Recap Edition. Uh, my name is Joey Weaver. I cover Georgia Tech uh, from the RumbleSeat.com on the SB Nation Network. Uh, joining me on this tonight, as always, is my uh, Basketball Conference Podcast teammate, uh, Mr. Mike McDaniel, covering the Virginia Tech Hokies for FightingGobbler.com on the fan sided network, as well as the entire conference for InsideTheACC.com. Uh, you can find us. We do this weekly podcast talking about ACC football. We are on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're on SoundCloud. Uh, you can hit us on Twitter. I'm at FTRS Joey. He is at Mike McDaniel ACC. And together, we're at BC Podcast ACC. But Mike, this game just went final, the national championship game. Uh, Clemson comes away as national champs, 35-31 on a last-second touchdown pass by Deshaun Watson to none other than the short white guy himself, Hunter Renfro. Uh, I I don't know about you. I thought that was about as amazing of a game as we could have asked for for this national title game. Yeah, and when you look at last year's game, especially coming into this year, it's like, how could this get better? And by every indication, given what the two teams were returning on both sides of the football, it really was expected that this game would be just as good or even better than last year. And it was hard to imagine coming in how this game would turn out that way. And honestly, through the first couple of drives and, and really the first half of this game, it really didn't seem like it was going to live up to the same kind of hype. There were a lot of mistakes on both, for both teams on both sides of the ball, a lot of drop passes for Alabama, some some penalties that they had on their side, and then Clemson with some questionable turnovers and play calling as well. It really didn't seem like uh, it would ever, you know, really necessarily live to live up to the hype that we kind of garnered from last year. And of course, last year's game was so good it would be very difficult to top. But just like last year's game, a lot of offensive fireworks down the stretch, and that's ultimately uh, going to be the story here. And how Deshaun Watson looks like he just closed out his collegiate career. It was really an incredible, fantastic game, um, all really all the way through. Uh, I thought Clemson started out kind of slow. They got down 14 nothing pretty quickly to Alabama, and at that point I was kind of groaning, kind of rolling my eyes like, oh, boy, um, here this one goes. But they come back, and really it was the last maybe six or seven minutes of the game that was really unbelievable, must-watch TV, just uh, – just crazy plays being made by both sides. It was really, really impressive. Um, kind of walk you through how all this happened. So like I said, uh, Clemson started out really slowly in this game. Um, they got down 14 nothing to Alabama. Uh, they weren't able to get on the scoreboard until they scored a touchdown with about six minutes left until halftime. Um, up until then, they'd been held scoreless and really had not gotten a whole lot of anything going on offense. Uh, they'd gone three and out a couple of times. They had a turnover on downs on their first drive had a couple of punts. It, it wasn't good. Got a little momentum going into the half, and, and that really benefited them. Uh, they come out after halftime and seemingly lose all of that momentum. Uh, it was like second or third play of the, of the drive. Uh, it was a bad fumble by Wayne Gallman. Uh, it turns into an easy field goal for Alabama. Uh, another couple drives later, Clemson scores another touchdown, four plays, 42 yards. Uh, the big thing that they struggled with for – the first two quarters of this game and even a little bit into the second half was field position. Um, Mike, I don't know if you caught on that, but field position was a huge story here, especially in the first half of this game. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, really in, in my mind, you know, starting with, uh, you know, Clemson going for it, like you just mentioned and kind of flipping the field to Alabama there to start the game. And then, uh, you know, Clemson really never got it going offensively in the first half, and Deshaun Watson missed a lot of easy throws, and, and then some throws that were not so easy, but throws that we've seen him make in the past with such ease. And I think, you know, when looking at Clemson in the first half offensively, they didn't really get it going. Alabama had some issues of their own, but they were at least running the ball. And, you know, this game really turned in the second half, I thought, when Bo Scarborough got hurt because Alabama lost a power running attack. They were still running the ball effectively, but you know, when you lose a guy like Scarborough and a guy who really carried the offense in the first half, you know, it makes it difficult. And I think Alabama also um, in the first half, when you consider how they had Jake Coker last year, and Jake Coker is not nearly the quarterback that Jalen Hurts could potentially be here down the line. But by the same token, they missed Jake Coker's ability to kind of take the top off of defense. You saw a lot of short throws by Alabama and Clemson's defense closed on those quick throughout the entire game and especially in the first half, which 
going back to the field position is a big reason why both teams kind of struggled to kind of take hold of this game. Neither offense could really get going. The field position, you know, Clemson put themselves into a hole early and never really recovered there in the first half. Alabama and Clemson were just kind of trading punts back and forth. But, you know, both teams were playing some pretty solid defense other than a few a few key mistakes there. Um you know, that ultimately led to a couple early Alabama touchdowns. But, yeah, I thought field position for Clemson was was crucial in the first half and a big reason why they had trouble getting going on offense. As you mentioned, I mean, there were a couple of, of – the first two touchdowns of the game by Alabama, it's not like they really drew out drives and just pounded the Clemson defense. They really just hit a few big plays, especially in the running game uh, with Bo Scarborough, who was looking really, really good in the first half. Uh, with a couple of long touchdown runs. And I think that was – it was not only just that they were scoring, but kind of the nature of how they were scoring that had me really concerned for Clemson. But otherwise, neither team really getting a ton going. Uh, Alabama doing a really good job of pinning Clemson deep in their territory repeatedly. Clemson not doing a great job of, of pushing Alabama back. And so it, as much as Clemson's defense was playing well, uh, they, they weren't able to really gain a whole lot of ground in field position, and it made things very tough for an offense that was struggling to get moving. So, Mike, we're at 17-14, uh, midway through the third quarter. Alabama gets the ball back with two minutes and 54 seconds. They get to uh, they get a second and four. They convert it on, a, and they get second and ten, basically, uh, with a little under two minutes left in the, uh, in the, in the, in the third quarter. Sorry. Um, and Mike, do you remember the the key play and really key plays in which Alabama beat up Clemson last year? What what were just the the major plays that were sticking out in your mind uh, for Alabama's offense last year? Uh, O.J. Howard, yes, yeah. three or four. <laughs> yeah, long plays to O.J. Howard, and not not you know O.J. Howard breaks four tackles and it looks like Superman running down the field. It's Clemson. Feels like OJ Howard is maybe not really worth covering. Wide, uh, open. wide open, like three times in the game last year. So late in the third quarter, Alabama's struggling for points. What do they do? They run the Clemson's going to forget to cover OJ Howard play, and sixty-eight yards later, out. sixty-eight yards later, OJ Howard basically untouched uh, into the end zone and uh, gives Alabama a twenty-four fourteen lead. Clemson comes storming back, nine plays, seventy-two yards, touchdown. Uh, Deshaun Watson was really settling in by this point. Um, he was standing up in the face of a brutal uh, Alabama pass rush. Uh, he was getting some protection, but still, you know, not having a whole ton of time to throw, making some really good throws. Uh, Mike Williams came up with several huge catches in this game, uh, including a touchdown at the end of this drive. So Clemson scores 24-21. Another couple of defensive stands by each team. And this is where it starts to get crazy, Mike. Uh, 6.33 left in the fourth quarter. Clemson's got a, uh, a three-point deficit they're trying to address. And they go six plays, 88 yards, touchdown, including a huge completion to Jordan Leggett for 17 yards, a huge completion to Mike Williams for 26 yards, a 15-yard penalty that is very, uh, very uncharacteristic of a generally well-coached Alabama team a 15-yard run by Deshaun Watson, uh, and a, a finally a one-yard run by Wayne Gallman to finish it all off. Um, it was a, a great drive to give them the lead and, and something that really had to happen and swung a lot of momentum their way, put a lot of pressure on the Alabama offense, Mike. Yeah, it did. Um, and, and, you know, say what you will about Wayne Gallman. Uh, he had a lot of issues getting going early in this game, I thought. Uh, the Alabama defense was just so suffocating. I thought when Clemson really started moving the ball well, it was when they were kind of using the short passing game kind of at their, as their second running game, quite frankly. Um, you know, Gallman had all sorts of issues getting going, but then what you saw down the stretch as Alabama started to get more and more worn down defensively is you saw more designed quarterback runs out to Sean Watson that opened up lanes for Wayne Gallman on that initial touchdown drive to really get Clemson within striking distance to start the fourth quarter. Mike, Alabama gets the ball back. First two plays, Jalen Hurts incomplete. Jalen Hurts complete to Damian Harris for a six-yard loss. Uh, and this was the point that you could really see Clemson executing their game plan, right? I, was, believe, that was, I believe that was a Ben Bulware play, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if it was. Out the flat. Yep. Ben Bulware 
Ben Bowler made a couple of phenomenal plays in this game where he he read exactly what was going to happen on on Alabama's offense and basically told told his teammates here's what's about to happen and they were able to make stops. So that was another one of those where he goes and shoots through and makes a tackle on a screen pass before anything can even get going. Um, and so it's third and 16, Mike, at the Alabama 26-yard line, about three and a half minutes left. And then a uh, – well, I guess I guess it wasn't here. It was a little later. 15-yard uh, pass to Ardarius Stewart gets him to fourth and one. Alabama converts a fourth down. And then a backwards pass to Ardarius Stewart down the field to who, Mike? O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard. Maybe you should cover him. Clemson, like you think we'd learn eventually – um, good idea. Who knows? And, and then the play that put Alabama ahead and yet also kind of in a weird way ended up costing them the game. Uh, next play with about two minutes left, Jalen Hurts with a brilliant 30-yard touchdown run uh, right up the middle of Clemson's defense. Uh, he, he did a great job dodging some tacklers. It was a brilliant run by a freshman. Problem was he left two minutes on the clock for Deshaun Watson, Mike, and uh, – well, that, that's that's a dangerous amount of time to leave a guy as good as he and that offense can be. Yeah, and Watson in the second half was uh, just unbelievably good. Um, and it's the second year in a row he's really kind of turned it on in the second half. Uh, go over 400 yards again, three touchdowns to end the game. Uh, the Really the only drive, especially in the fourth quarter where Clemson uh, kind of got stopped, was when Jordan Leggett dropped that pass on third down. Boy, did he make up for it, though, with two crucial catches down the stretch, specifically the last one that uh, put Clemson in, into uh, really inside the 10-yard line with about 14 seconds left. So that was the biggest catch of the game, other than, of course, uh, what was to uh, pursue there afterwards. The way that this drive played out, too, Mike, was a little strange, especially with, from a clock management perspective. Uh, second and five from their own 37 Deshaun Watson deep down the left sideline to Mike Williams, a huge catch again, just doing it the way he's done it the whole game, a uh, 24-yard gain. Uh, they're kind of on the edge of field goal range here. Um, first and 10, uh, second and four. Deshaun Watson with a one-yard run on second and four. They snap the ball with about a minute left. They run the clock all the way down inside of 30 seconds before they snap the ball in third and three. And, Mike, I think this is where you started to have a couple of questions about what the strategy was here. Yeah, so my biggest issue with this is that they just let time, and, you know, as we're recording this, I'm watching the highlights right now of that final drive. You know, Clemson makes a couple of big plays. Um, Deshaun Watson kind of, you know, gets the team on the line. Then they just kind of let time tick off the clock with two timeouts. I'm sitting there wondering, okay, I understand you don't want to leave Alabama time, you know, given – you know, even though your defense was playing really well, you just gave up that long touchdown drive uh, to Jalen Hurts and that Alabama offense. So I, I understood the mindset there, but at the same time, I felt the Clemson almost took too much time off the clock because once they completed that pass to Leggett with about 12 seconds left to get them inside the 10 yard line, they're really kind of hampered with what they could do. They only had maybe two plays to get into the end zone. It ended up working out that on the third play, they threw that touchdown pass to Hunter Renfro. So it worked out for Clemson, but I was sitting there kind of looking at, you know, I was sitting there watching the game with my family and we were kind of looking around, you know, sitting there wondering, man, did they just take too much time off the clock, maybe give themselves less of a chance to score? It seemed like they were kind of taking their foot off the gas after they had this great drive going where they were really threatening to go win the game. But, of course, with that Hunter Renfro touchdown catch there at the end, it all ended up working out. Well, and I think worth mentioning, too, here is that the reason that clock management became a bit of an issue was because Clemson had two timeouts. And you're kind of waiting on them to call one, like you got to save yourself a little bit of time. You might score a touchdown and not have to trust your field goal kicker to send the national championship game to overtime against Alabama and one of the greatest like, coaches who's ever lived against freaking Alabama. Yeah, um, it hasn't lost in a year and a half and beat you in this game last year and the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, there's pressure everywhere. Um, so third and three to Sean Watson, six yards to Hunter Renfro. Renfro was huge in this game. Uh, had another pass complete down the left sideline to Jordan Leggett. He had a, a couple of really good moments in this game to, to make up for, like you mentioned, a bad drop. Uh, there was a pass interference on Mike Williams. Maybe not the best decision to throw the ball to begin with, considering he was in double coverage. Horrible but, throw. Horrible yeah. decision. I mean, the throw was fine, actually. It was just horrible decision. The throw, yeah. I, I think I would agree with that. The throw was fine, but you're trying to force it a little bit at that point. Uh, but he kind of got tackled a little bit by the defender, so they got pass interference. 
you had one play. I, I looked at my wife and I said, Deshaun Watson keeper. Uh, apparently, I am not the smart one uh, when it comes to football. It was a little sprint out pass. Hunter Renfro in the flats, untouched, uh, walks into the end zone. One second left on the clock, and, and Clemson is your national champions. Um, really, that just in, that pick play killed them all night. It sure did. Um, yeah, Clemson just found a way here, Mike. I, I was impressed again with how slowly they started. They pull off 21 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, you could kind of tell that the Alabama defense was starting to get a little bit gassed. Uh, I think they said. I think I saw a stat somewhere that Alabama has not had a game this year where they've had to defend more than 75 plays. And Clemson ran over. I guess Clemson ran 119 plays in this game. Um, no, they ran 99 plays in this game. My math's not that good. It's late. Um, 57 passes, 42 runs for Clemson. Uh, 99 plays was about 25 plays more than Alabama's defense has had to put up with this year. And I think it kind of started to show after a while. Um, but really just a resilient, incredible effort by, by the Clemson Tigers. Um, I, I felt like just generally, Mike, just overall impressions. I mean, I thought that I thought that Clemson outplayed Alabama for a large majority of this game. Sure. They just They just kept finding ways to shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm um, actually, you know, once again, sitting there watching the game, I, I, you know, I'm looking over my family. I'm like, you know what? Clemson should have won this game by, I think, two touchdowns, truthfully, if they didn't have the stupid turnovers, some penalties that killed them. Um, you know, that really ugly fumble to start the second half and, and really set up Alabama on the doorstep. Luckily, the defense held. And I, I think the story in this game has to be the Clemson defense. They were able to do what you and I talked about in the preview, Joey. They were able to stop the run. Um, it, it didn't look good early, but when it counted, they made enough plays to stop the run or at least slow down the Alabama running game and keep Jalen Hurts in the pocket. And, and you saw tonight that Jalen Hurts is going to be a really, really good quarterback for Alabama, but he doesn't have it yet from the pocket. And he made some good throws tonight for Alabama, really kept them in the game. And, you know, Hurts had that long touchdown run that uh, really it was – just a couple plays here and there for that Clemson defense, though, that uh, really kept Alabama in this football game. Other than that, the offense of the Crimson Tide outside of that first quarter, um, or first quarter and a half, really, where they had a couple of early touchdowns, they really couldn't get much going. It was a play here or there. And Nick Saban really, uh, you know, going into the locker room at halftime said it. He said, we're not consistent enough on offense right now. He said, we had a couple good runs uh, that were able to kind of save us here in the first half. But you know, ultimately, he didn't think they were consistent enough, and they really weren't from start to finish, and that ended up being the difference. The one other thing I'll point to real quick, Hunter Renfro. Uh, David Hale of ESPN actually tweeted this a little while ago before Hunter Renfro, uh, right around the time Hunter Renfro uh, made a couple of big catches, and right before his uh, first touchdown catch of this game, he said Hunter Renfro was 100, couldn't bench 150 pounds when he got to Clemson. He was a walk-on. Could not bench 150 pounds when he showed Whoa. up. Whoa! Yeah, how wild is that? When he showed up uh, to try out for Dabo Swinney's team, and Dabo saw something in him. Dabo, of course, a former walk-on himself, saw something in Hunter Renfro. What does Hunter Renfro do? All he has is two touchdown catches, crucial here uh, in the second half here against Alabama, and and also had two touchdowns, of course, last year as well. So. Four touchdown catches against Alabama. You can have your four and five star recruits, but Hunter Renfro is the guy that ultimately made the difference both in last year's game and keeping the game close, and then this year's game, of course, ultimately winning the whole thing for Clemson as they're now national champs. Hunter Renfro had an incredible game uh, 10 catches, 92 yards, and two touchdowns. The other guy, Mike, that I want to take a second and make sure that I give some credit to, um, I don't know if you have any idea where this is going, but uh, for those who have listened to our podcast in the past, you know that I am not a big proponent of one Wayne Gallman. Uh, I think I think that he is one of the more more underwhelming guys relative to the kind of hype that he gets. Mike, outside of that that ugly fumble to start the second half, I thought Wayne Gallman played a really solid game. He was fantastic, especially in pass protection. I thought he was gigantic for Clemson mm -hmm. tonight. Um, really becoming that, uh, what, sixth or seventh blocker, depending on whether or not Jordan Leggett was running out for a pass. Uh, I thought Gallman was huge in this game because Alabama was bringing the heat all night long, especially late in the game, and Gallman had some huge blitz pickups, especially on that final touchdown drive. Now, in, in all honesty, I mean, his, his stat line does not jump off the page at you. Um, he had 18 carries, 46 yards, and a touchdown, three catches for 39 yards. So he had 21 touches for 85 yards. Uh, that's not... 
going to just totally blow any, He's not going to get the game MVP for that. But it was huge what he was able to do. Just He opened the game getting a 10-yard gain around the corner uh, on, a, on the first play of the game, if I recall, or first play of Clemson's first drive. Uh, he was consistently able to get a few yards up the middle. And, and I thought that his performance here was, was really incredible against a, a defense that had him outmatched physically at the very least. Um, so I, I wanted to give him credit while we also spent a lot of time talking about how good Deshaun Watson was, how good uh, Clemson's defense was, uh, and so forth. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I agree with you on the offensive standpoint, but pointing to the defense, obviously Ben Bulware, huge game, no mistaking about it, you know, pointing out where plays were going before they happened, um, you know, making a couple of crucial tackles, had a couple of quarterback hurries. He was wreaking havoc all night final collegiate game there at Clemson. He was fantastic. The one other guy who isn't going to garner a whole lot of uh, praise just because the stats don't necessarily support how well he played, Cordrea Tankersley, covering both Calvin Wrigley um, and our Darius Stewart in this game. He was great. Um, he was a big reason why you know Alabama really didn't hit on a lot of big hitting passing plays in this one. Everything Alabama completed in this game were short passes and underneath, with the exception, of course, of that O.J. Howard pass. Uh, there uh, to, to give Alabama to extend Alabama's lead there uh, in the third quarter, but other than that, you know that was really just a blown coverage by Clemson. But I thought Cordrea Tankersley played a huge role, um, and that was one of the key matchups in this game. It was you know how would Clemson secondary match up against Alabama's receiving core? You know if the Clemson front seven were you know if they were able to uh, keep Jalen Hurts in the pocket and ultimately uh, you know, the defense's ability to kind of hang with those Alabama receivers ended up being the difference in this one. And Alabama's offense really had a hard time getting going with it without a couple of, you know, really long chunk plays. They sure did. Uh, Mike, let's talk about, so when we, we did our uh, preview podcast here, we talked about keys to the game. So what was the keys to, to Clemson winning? Um, and so the three that I distinctly remember, um, the first one we said Clemson had to get to a hundred rushing yards or kind of in the neighborhood, right? They didn't have to make a ton of hay running the ball, but they had to prove that they kind of could and could be a little bit threatening with doing so. Right. Turns out Clemson on the ground, 42 carries, 91 rushing yards. Uh, I guess it's close enough. <laughs> 41 carries, uh, 92 rushing yards. If you don't include taking a knee at the end. Um, so yeah, they did that. They got in the, uh, got in the neighborhood. The second key to the game was hold Alabama under 200 rushing yards, which is a little bit of a ridiculous sounding thing. Like if anybody's rushing for 200 yards on anybody, you think that they're doing pretty well. But when that is so clearly going to be the focal point of Alabama's offense, that was a, a, a thing you had to stop. You got to, like you said, you got to force Jalen Hurts to throw the ball down the field, which he did not have a lot of success doing. Final totals for Alabama 34 carries, 221 yards, three touchdowns. Literally the only reason in my mind that Alabama stayed in this football game. And, Mike, you want to know the difference between under 200 yards and the total? Jalen Hurts 30 yards up the middle to score that final touchdown. Yep. Or else it would have been under 200. And the Bo Scarborough injury, I mean, we can't overlook that as well, but I thought Clemson's defense did a pretty nice job from start to finish You know, to keep Alabama's running game in check at the very least. They definitely tightened up over the course of the game. Um, he had a couple of big runs early, like we said, a couple of long touchdown runs. Um, but, yeah, he finishes with 16 carries for 93 yards and two touchdowns. You held that guy under 100, 100 rushing yards, even, even again, considering he went out uh, out of this game with an injury. Um, that I'm certain that played a role somewhere down the stretch. But, uh, again, a, a really impressive performance by the Clemson defensive line. The third key to the game, and I think this is maybe where we miss the most, is said Clemson had to do a good job protecting Deshaun Watson. Keep him upright. He was going to kind of be able to find his guys. They didn't. He did find his guys, but they allowed him to get sacked four times, and yeah. uh, there were six tackles for loss all, all together by the Alabama defense. And, and truth be told, holding Alabama's defense to only six tackles for loss is – actually reasonably pretty good because they, they can be really nasty and get after you. Um, but this was a, I mean, this was as gutsy and tough of a performance as I've seen from Deshaun Watson. And I've seen a couple of those from him. Um, I was really impressed with how well he played in this game. And, and I thought that 
Clemson did a pretty solid job of executing their game plan outside of a couple of uh, a couple of little mishaps, Mike. Yeah, putting Dabo's, you know, uh, coined phrase, bring your own guts into action. He really took some big time hits tonight, uh, was running for his life a good bit, you know, when the offensive line just couldn't quite hold that Alabama pass rush. But, you know, Watson extended some plays. There was one game or one one play there that they made early in the fourth quarter where Watson was getting rushed. It looked like he was going to take a huge loss and ended up scrambling away and nearly completing a pass. He threw it in the general direction of Jordan Leggett. He took a huge hit on it, really got buried on that play. The fact that he was able to get it even in the neighborhood of Jordan Leggett where you know it looked like he might have a chance to make a play was an accomplishment in and of itself. The fact that Watson was able to scramble out of that, he, he was dead to rights probably two or three different times in that in that one play. So uh, there were a couple plays that Watson made tonight kind of improvising just to get out of, you know, big time loss of yardage plays, which I thought made a difference for uh, Clemson in this ball game, especially in the second half, because they knew if they wanted to win this game in the second half, they would have to um, win the field position battle, which they lost furiously in the first half. They had a ton of issues uh, flipping the field at the very least because Andy Teasdall, I mean, he's a decent punter, but he's rugby style. And, you know, a lot of those punts, uh, you know, didn't go, you know, much further than 40, 45 yards. And th they ran a lot of pooch kicks as well. So, uh, you know, the field position game wasn't getting uh, wasn't getting flipped on a dime. So I thought it was crucial for Deshaun Watson to make some plays with his feet in the second half to kind of keep drives alive and, and continue to keep the ball rolling for Clemson. Yeah, it was interesting kind of watching them actively try to avoid anything having to do with the Alabama kick or punt return game. Um it was like Clemson was going out of their way to give Alabama a decent field position as long as it meant the, the tide wasn't able to run the ball back, which is kind of interesting to me. Well, it's cool. I mean, which is cool, I guess. You know, you consider one of the pl major plays that cost you know Clemson last year was the long Kenyon Drake punt return. And, you know, when you have a, a special teams touchdown, be one of the major reasons why you lost a game last year. And then you have, of course, that onside kick as well. You know, Clemson didn't want to get – get beat on special teams this year and they didn't but they had to go kind of a roundabout way to do it it put a lot of pressure on the defense but it was clear that Dabo had a lot of faith in Brent Venable's defense and rightfully so Mike can I give you my low-key play of the game absolutely like, secret play that a lot of people aren't going to remember but that actually yep. might have actually impacted the final score do you have any ideas about what I might say no idea you can take this in a million different directions so we talked about that Awful fumble by Wayne Gallman to start the second half. Do you remember the play that Hunter Renfro made to run down and and make a tackle on that where the yep. otherwise the Alabama defender had a clear path to the end zone? Yep. Yep. If Hunter I mean, if that's, Hunter Renfro that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown if he hasn't chased him down. As a touchdown, whereas Clemson's defense came out, forced a three and out, and Alabama had to kick a field goal. That's a four point difference in a game that you won by four points. A huge swing. It's the that's, biggest. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's other than Renfro's touchdown catch. You know, there he goes out doing himself. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that's that's a play I I didn't even think about, but that's potentially the biggest play of the game. Low key play of the game. Uh, Hunter Renfro, by the way. I don't know what it is about playing Alabama, but somehow he just decides that that's the time to have his best games. Which there's not really a whole lot of better times for that, but. Uh, on the year, uh, he played in 10 games. He only had 34 catches coming into this game. He had 10 against Alabama. Um, so he, he – He shredded them last year too. He did. He did. Um, he really stepped up here uh, last year, like you said, uh, seven catches, 88 yards, two more touchdowns. So uh, <laughs> he, he has done a, an incredible amount of his career production just against the Crimson Tide, which is kind of a crazy stat. But – uh, Mike, before we get out of here, I want to I want us to talk through player of the game on offense and on defense. Um, on offense, I gotta think you got to look at Deshaun Watson, and it's, that's as you know prototypical as it gets. Heisman runner up, he's well known. You know, blah 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 blah. Thirty six for fifty six, four hundred twenty yards, three touchdowns, and perhaps most importantly, no interceptions. Deshaun Watson did not turn the ball over in this game, and that cannot be. You know, it cannot be overstated how important that was. Yep, I agree with you. Um, Deshaun Watson's the offensive player of the game, but I think if you had to pick 
um, a couple guys from the receiving core. In my opinion, you look at Mike Williams and Deion Kane, and the reason why I picked those two guys is because neither one of them uh, played in this game a year ago. Mike Williams, of course, broke his neck in the opener last year, You know, fought hard to get back this season, and now looks like he'll be the top wide receiver off the board in the NFL draft here in the next few months. And the other receiver, Deion Kane, who was suspended after some off-the-field issues uh, prior to last year's national championship, didn't play in the national championship um, or in the semifinal. And for him to come out, have five catches for 94 yards, Williams, eight catches, 94 yards, and of course that touchdown there um, to pull Clemson within striking distance late. I thought those two guys had a huge, um, huge impact on this game, uh, one in which you know Clemson really needed from an offensive perspective because Hunter Renfro made some big plays, but when you needed a big-time first down, Mike, Mike Williams and Deion Kane were there to produce for you. I should probably also add on, not only did Deshaun Watson go 36 for 56 for 423 touchdowns, no picks, but he also had 21 carries for 43 yards and a touchdown. So that also impacted this game. But I'm with you. If I had to pick somebody that was offensive player of the game that was not named Deshaun Watson, it's probably Mike Williams. Um, he he had a huge effect on Clemson's ability to just f- flat out move the ball at, at, like in any capacity in this game. Um, his ability to make some catches deep down the sideline and some pretty tight man coverage it, it was was so huge in this game and kind of how it turned out. So – um, he is the other guy I might look to, but I think really realistically, you've got to give it to Deshaun Watson here for what, what he meant to the team overall. Yeah. And what, you know, while we're adding some stuff on here, um, uh, the point I want to make about Deion Kane is that Clemson's offense had nothing going in the first half and he took a screen pass right across the middle of the field and took it 43 yards down the sideline to set Clemson up for their first scoring drive huge momentum change in the game there right before halftime because the Tigers could not get anything going on offense. Deshaun Watson looked really rattled out there, truthfully. Um, You know, the Clemson offensive line was having a lot of issues dealing with the pass rush there early. I thought that play changed the game, you know, to get Deion Kane kind of shake a couple of defenders and take off down the sideline and really get Clemson rolling there on offense late in the first half set, but really pivotal scoring drive for them. So it was one of the many big plays that Clemson made on both sides of the football tonight, but I thought Deion Kane and Mike Williams were two of the major reasons why Clemson ended up winning the national championship. On defense, Mike, uh, first of all, I mean, I think the obvious leading candidate here has got to be Hunter Renfro. I made the tackle of the game. Um, I think he's your clear defensive player of the game. But if I had to pick somebody who maybe saw actual snaps on defense, um, this is going to sound kind of strange, but I don't know that I'm going to have an easy time picking anybody on Clemson's side of the ball. And it's not so much an indictment because obviously Clemson's defense was fantastic in this game. It's really more about it was very much a team effort. Like there was no one guy that really took over the game. Um, You might say that Ben Bowler did some good things, again, kind of getting his guys in position. He made some key tackles. He was in position in a lot of times. Um, Carlos Watkins had a huge impact in this game, six tackles, uh, one for a loss. Um, Cordero Tankersley, like you said, impacting Alabama's passing game. But if I had to pick a defensive player of the game, this is going to sound a little silly. It might actually come from a team that did not win. Uh, Ruben Foster comes out of this game with 12 yeah. tackles, six solo, including a sack. Um, he was everywhere, and he he gave Clemson's offense so many headaches in this game. Um, that's not really a reference to some of the dirty hits, but there were a couple of it those. Could be, though. Yeah. It, it could be if you wanted it to be. But um, he was a an absolute monster on the Alabama defense, and I, I think if I had to – pick one in particular it might have to be him but if it had to come from the winning team I guess give me Ben Bowler just for what he overall meant to the defense in this performance yeah I don't want to you know sound lame but I agree with you Ruben Foster was also playing at less than 100 percent you remember he made a tackle there uh late in the first half it ended up being uh one of the major plays to slow down a second Clemson scoring drive there because Clemson was really seizing momentum and Foster made a huge play in the backfield on Deshaun Watson uh, that ended up stalling the Clemson drive and they had to punt right before half. So, um, you you know, Foster went to the sideline, got looked at, didn't return there in the first half, came out in the second half and played just as well as he did for nearly two full quarters there in the first half. So uh, Foster's the defensive player of the game, I, you know, for Alabama. I think if you had to pick one, on Clemson, it would have to be Bullware just because he's a signal caller for that defense. They were in position all night with the exception of two, you know, a blown coverage um, on O.J. Howard, and then they let Jalen Jalen Hurts escape there. Um, but other than that, um, they, they were able to keep 
Alabama contained within the pocket, uh, whether it be Jalen Hurts, whether it be the running game outside of Scarborough breaking a couple runs. Alabama's running game had a lot of trouble getting chunk yardage in this game, which is one of the major reasons why Alabama won the game last year. So it starts with bowl wear. Tankersley was huge in pass coverage. I agree with you on Watkins as well. He was really, really solid tonight um, against the run and against the pass. He was wreaking havoc in the backfield as well. So Clemson's defense, very much a team effort, like you said. Uh, the defense won them the national championship, in my opinion. Uh, but Sean Watson's ability there to make plays down the stretch obviously helped as well. Just an incredible performance here by Clemson, Mike, on both sides of the ball. Um, for the defense to, to stick with it as the offense was really struggling in the early going, uh, for the offense to make the plays that they did down the stretch in, in the moments in which they made them, I, I was just amazed. I mean, what an incredible game. What a huge win for Dabo Swinney and for Clemson, uh, for Deshaun Watson, as he and a lot of his offensive teammates are headed to the draft next year. Clemson's your national champions, Mike. They they end the reign of terror uh, of Alabama, who had not lost in, what was it, like 20-some straight games? Like 28? Yeah, I, I believe it was 28 straight, dating back to October of 15. Uh, yeah, but they lost to Ole Miss last they year. Lost, it was the Ole Miss game. And they hadn't lost since. And uh, first time that Nick Saban's ever lost in a national title game. Uh, that's impressive. You, you got to say something for that. Um, this was this was amazing, Mike, and this was really what Clemson has been building towards over the last couple of years. Um, hats off to them, and, and I think really cements the ACC as your top college, your top conference in college football. Has to. Has to. That's that's really has to. That's don't add that's us. It really, I mean. The ACC had such a good bowl season to begin with, and I actually tweeted this out on my personal account. Got a lot of hate from a lot of people for it, but I said the only way the ACC is going to be a better conference than the SEC, and I, I was talking in general because I thought the ACC already cemented themselves top to bottom as a better conference than the SEC this year uh, with their bowl performance, but the only way the ACC was going to get genuine love as being better than the ACC is if the heavyweight in the ACC, Clemson, beat the heavyweight in the SEC, Alabama, and my God, they did it. They pulled it off. I've got one last question for you, Mike. Does does this game mean that Pittsburgh is technically national champions? Good God, transitive property, all that bullshit I have to hear every year. I hear the same <laughs> thing with, you know, with Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech will win a bowl game, and then Virginia fans are like, oh, you know, at least we played Virginia Tech tough, and they, you know went on to win the Independence Bowl. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> and you hear that stuff every year. But the actual transitive property at work where, you know, hey, Pitt actually beat Clemson. Clemson wins a national championship. Yeah. All right, Pitt, line up against Clemson now, and let's see what happens. Those can be some pretty mind-numbing discussions. Um, cool. Mike, uh, anything else you want to talk about with this game or otherwise before we get out of here? No, we're good. Um, last time recording here for – a little bit, anyway. Yeah, that does it for the 20, uh, 2016 college football season. It it went fast. It did for sure. But, hey, it was a fitting end. An ACC team wins a national championship. I, I tweeted late in the game, I think while Clemson was driving down to score their game-winning touchdown, that this was not the game that we deserved, but it was the game that we needed right now. Um, this is something that will last us through the offseason that we can go back and rewatch and – uh, enjoy. I don't know about you. I was really like nervous, like shaking watching it. Like this, this game gave me like stress just to watch, which you is how you know. Clemson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's how you know that it was you know it was that good. So, um, really good stuff here. Well, Mike, this has been fun. Uh, I've enjoyed this. It's been cool doing this on YouTube on a uh, on Google Hangouts on the uh, Mark Rogers TV ACC channel. Might have to uh, do this a little bit more often. We might have I like to. It. I like. We might it. have to. Um, yeah, so speaking of the, uh, the future, um, so with the season ended, we got to start working into uh, some, some season postmortems. I think we're going to try to do this team by team, uh, try to bring in some guests where we can to try to break down what happened, what's going on moving forward. Uh, recycle some old audio. Recycle, yeah, we got to check and see how wrong our preseason predictions were. Um, we got a lot of stuff still to, still to come here in the coming months. We got signing day coming up. We got to talk about some crouton. 
uh, I don't know. It should be fun. We're gonna we're gonna stick around and keep doing some of this stuff through the off season, so that you guys have some uh, ACC football related content uh, coming your way at a uh, regular pace. You guys can live and breathe ACC football for a matter of I don't know what we got eight or nine months now until the next opener. So it'll be a while. We are not doctors, and we're not telling you that that is good for your health, but. If it is something you choose to do with your life, you could live and breathe ACC football at, at all times. So um, we're going to try to help make sure that that's an option for you if, you if you so choose. Yep, we'll be there covering it every step of the way. Even when there's no football going on, we got you. We're doing this for you guys. Um, all right, cool. Well, Mike, let's get out of here. Uh, it's it's late. This game ran really long, and now it's like 1.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. So I think we got to go to work tomorrow and stuff. So let's uh, let's cut this off here. Um, we will be coming back, like we said, uh, kind of doing some of these uh, season recaps and such with some guests, bringing people on uh, to uh, talk about kind of what happened and what, what to expect going forward with all these ACC teams. Um, so you guys stay tuned for that. Like I said up front, you guys can reach us uh, on Twitter. I'm at FTRS Joey. He is at Mike McDaniel ACC. And together we're at BC Podcast ACC. You can send us an email to the longest email address known to man, basketballconferencepodcast at gmail.com. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, if you guys got like questions or comments or concerns or whatever, you can send them there. Um, it's a nice little complaint box or whatever you want to make it. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, on Google Play, on SoundCloud. Uh, we're probably going to be looking into some more platforms that we can get onto. I haven't done a ton of research, but they might be available. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Um, Mike, am I forgetting anything or are we good to go? We're good to go. We are good to go. All right, Mike. Well, uh, it's been a good season. It's been fun. Uh, ACC are your national champions. I, I take full responsibility as this, you know, podcast first year we do this. ACC uh, is is your ruler of the entire land. So uh, maybe we should come back and do this again next year. Let's do it for sure. All right. Well, until then, uh, for Mr. Mike McDaniel, I am Joey Weaver. Thank you guys for listening. Go ACC.